Hey folks, welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. It is Sunday, October 23rd, and uh, it's really nice out today. It's probably about 75 degrees, but man, we have a stiff south wind. It, it's so strong, I had to hang a bag of rocks off my tripod so my camera won't blow over. It's uh, gusting up to 30. Down here in these trees, it's not too bad. I got a pretty good wind block uh, keeping it off of me right here. But uh, you probably see some leaves falling behind me when it kicks up. But uh, today, uh, I'm going to uh, put on some of these uh, components that the good folks at Saracel sent me. Uh, so I have been feeding my hives. I'm feeding them uh, one and a half to one ratio right now. Uh, after, if I still continue to feed on into November, I'll bump it up to two to one. But uh, at that point, I probably will just switch to solid sugar feeders on top. So. Uh, Saracel has sent me some really neat stuff. Let me show you. And I did unboxings on uh, these these items uh, in a prior video, and I'll put, try and remember put a link to that right here if you want to go check that out. Because there's one other thing that they sent that I'm not going to put on right now, and that's a uh, a uh, bee escape for when you're harvesting your honey. So let me show you what I'm going to put on today. So this is the Hive Defender, I believe is what they call it. It's a bottom board. It's made out of really strong plastic. Uh, what's neat about this is it has a adjustable vent on the front. You just move this switch here so that's closed and open. You can see that there. And also it has a wasp hornet yellow jacket trap on the bottom that slides out. It's got these little cones in here so that's what the the uh, yellow jackets will come in through and then they'll be trapped in here and can't get out and they will die from dehydration or they kill each other so uh when you have it snapped in place it's pretty well sealed so if you want to do an oa treatment uh, the only openings is these four little holes right here probably no big deal and uh, you can uh, shut your vent right here uh, or in, if it's in the summertime and it's hot it's warm out you can open it up so and it's got this green thing on the front. I haven't quite figured that out, but I'm just gonna leave it and run it. So the beast blocker is a thing that works with this. Let me show you that. I forgot the beast blockers. I'm gonna have to go get them. Anyway, it's a piece that fits over the front and it's a uh, robbing. It stops robbing or you can lock your hive down and keep the beast, any beast from going in or out. So pretty slick. And I've demonstrated that on a hive 12 when it was getting robbed out. I didn't have this bottom, but I just stuck the thing on front, screwed it into the wood, and it stopped that robbing, and uh, I saved that hive with that beast blocker. So I'm going to put these in, and I have the Saracel top feeder, and it comes with a wood shim for it, and I just got it painted. And the good thing about this is if your hive's not level, if it's leaning to the back, front, or sides, the bees can still get to every part of the syrup because they can feed from any of the four corners and the center. So uh, the only syrup I have mixed up right now has Pro Health in it, and I don't want to put it down here in my hives. It'll start robbing. I'm open feeding with that uh, syrup up there that's got Pro Health. I need to make a, a run to the store and get me some more sugar. So I'm going to get one of my existing uh, top feeders and I'm just going to swap it out and uh, pour from that feeder into this. So there might be a few ants in there. I don't know. We'll see. But let's get started and get these installed and check them out. Okay, I've come up with a plan of action here. So what I'm going to do, so this is my Hive 12 that's really weak. And uh, it, you can see I've got the beast blocker on here without the Hive Defender bottom. So you can use these just by themselves so uh, it it screws onto the front and these little levers open up for your home bees to come and go and the robber bees can't figure this out they gather around the bottom here which you can see right there bees trying to get in there and they can't figure out how to get in there so that's that's the beauty of this thing and that's how other robbing screens work they'll have an entrance up high and the bottom will be open but with the screen and the robber beast just keep trying to go through that screen 
But uh, so I'm going to put the hive defender bottom on here, and also back here behind me this this hive that has a busted up bottom. So that's hive uh, 19 right there. You can see that screen bottom board there is just cratered. It's rotted out. So the way those are designed, there's a little board that goes across the front and there's cracks there where water can get in. So if you don't have it really slathered up with paint, uh, it's gonna get wet and there's some ingrain there too. I don't know uh, what I didn't get painted right, but that's what happens. And uh, if it's designed better than that, I think it would be better. Uh, I just, it's just not a good design, I don't think. They're not made to last. The, uh, it's the slide, it has a slide in bottom that you can insert, that you can put in and take out, you know, for summer and winter. It's a good idea, but it just, they don't last. I think that was three years old. This was its third season. And there's quite a few out here like that. So here's one right here you can see that's put together and it's still holding up. But you see see those cracks there? That needs to be filled in and sealed up because it's going to look just like that other one before long. And uh, so what happens is it gets in that crack right there. And you can see the rust from the staples. Water gets in that crack, goes in that end grain, and that, that piece just rots out right there. And then this end piece just falls off. And that's what's happened right here. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is a weak little hive that struggled throughout the year, for whatever reason. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing torn down. I'm trying to get it built up, get some uh, food inside so they can make it through the winter. And then I'm planning on combining two hives on top of this. So I'll go ahead and take this beast blocker off of here. One thing about when you put uh, robbing screens on, the bees can't clean out the dead bees uh, because they can't drag them out the front. So there's a dead one laying right there. Not a big deal with this little hive, but if you had a big hive, that might build up over time and block your entrance. So you need to pay attention to that when you use some kind of a robbing screen like this or anytime you reduce your entrance way down, watch for, uh, make sure your hive entrance is clear that the bees are able to keep it clear. All right, uh, I've got tangle foot on this to keep the ants out and somehow they're getting past it, but uh, looks like it may have dried up, I don't know. But uh, I'm gonna put it down where the uh, hive defender feet go before I set it down. I'm gonna attempt to just lift this thing up and set it up here so I can have space to work with. Yeah, it don't weigh much. This stuff's called Tanglefoot, and uh, it's an ant or a crawling insect barrier, so it keeps ants from crossing it. But I don't guess I got it thick enough earlier on, so I'll put it on pretty thick this time. So get this uh, hive defender bottom down here. We'll set it right on that stuff. All right, got my shim here so it's sitting level. Okay, there's a good shot of it. I had to scoop my, smush my tangle foot out a little bit. I had it a little too narrow, so I scooted it over some. So see these little tabs here? That fits on the inside of your box on each corner. So, so I'm running a slatted rack on this hive, this little spacer thing right here. So I'm gonna break the hive apart right here and scoot it over, but I need something to set it on. So I'm gonna use this lid, this little hive stand. When you use a lid for a hive stand, you want it perpendicular to the box when you set it down. So it's only touching in four points, a lot less chance of squishing bees when you do it that way.
so you can see what the slatted rack looks like. What these do is in the summertime, they give a little bit more space, or actually early spring, there's more space between the bottom of a brood frame and the entrance. So the theory is the queen will lay down a little bit lower on your frame and fill it up more complete with brood. And also in the summertime, it gives more space in the hive, so you'll have a little bit less bearding, a little less crowded in the hive, a little more ventilation. So there's our solid bottom board. It's in good shape. It could use a little coat of paint right here. So let's see if this slatted rack will fit on here. Okay, if not, I won't use it. It should fit. Yeah, it does. Is it standard dimensions? You can see how it sits on there. And uh, that green is where the entrance is going to be. So all those bees are wanting to get in their hive. So there are some foragers out there. Follow up with the hive body. They'll figure this out in a minute. And I'm going to put this beast blocker on here. So this is a different one than I had on there before. Uh, the one I had on there before I snapped off the tabs so it would fit down inside that bottom board. So this is going to fit right on the front and these teeth will fit right in these tabs here to keep it from moving around. So these screws are in perfect alignment for this setup. When I did them on the wood bottom board without this defender bottom they were lined up a little bit on the crack so this has helped out i should use the one i had before this is the one i had before they're used to seeing these colors so i'm going to put this one back yeah perfect fit so this one was locked down and this one was open, so they should recognize that now. I'm getting a few bees in that tangle foot. I'm going to scooch it back in. There we go. All right, let's get the feeder on top now. So it's not a bad little colony, it's just down on numbers. And I've got a feeder in here now. I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to add a couple frames. So if I forget about this in springtime and they go building comb, I don't get a piece of comb in here hanging off the lid. It's about half full and it's got a lot of ants in it. So I just retrieved these from the freezer. Quite a bit of propolis built up on them. I'll put one on each side. Just to try and keep them centered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now there's plenty of room for them to store this nectar. I'm going to shake these off of here because I'm not going to use this right now. You don't want to use an inner cover in conjunction with a top feeder because of this notch. Other bees will come in here and start robbing it. Here goes! Our Saracel top feeder is in place, in position. It's just a skosh narrower than these boxes. And these are Man Lake boxes. So if I center it, it's going to have about an eighth of an inch on each side. 
and that's okay it's not going to be on here long term I decided I'm going to go ahead and use some of my uh, nectar that I mixed up sugar water one and a half to one it has a little bit of feeding stimulant in it I don't have any just plain sugar water with no stimulant mixed right now and I don't have any sugar handy I could pour the sugar out of that frame feeder or that nectar out of that frame feeder in here but it's really nasty and it probably just needs to be thrown out because of all the ants that are in it hopefully with this uh, tangle foot a new coat down here I've stopped the ant problem so I'm gonna I'm not gonna fill this thing up uh, you don't want to put a whole bunch of feed in for a small colony like that because it'll take them forever to get it down and it's just going to sit there and probably ferment cause problems it could get full of ants so i'm just going to put maybe a half an inch in here plus i'm kind of concerned about the robbing because of the pro health that i have mixed into my feed but i've got the beast blocker on here so if it does start robbing uh, they won't be able to get in but they will definitely surround this hive so we'll hang out and see how it does So see these bees? Boy, they smell it. It's like I, I rang the dinner bell. Okay, I'm stopping there. I already got one stuck in here. So you can see my nectar is mostly in the front, which is good. That means I got a little bit front tilt, and that's what you want. Get this covered up. <laughs> so you want a top board that's smooth on the bottom to keep pests out see how that's nice and smooth it's not made out of USB or something that's rough that ants could get through this is a full cement block it's heavy that also helps with the seal that's my reminder that I got a feeder in there okay there we go They'll figure that out here in a minute. It's not any different than what they had before other than there's a little green strip there. And they don't really have a, a landing board per se other than that little space right there. If you see bees with pollen, you know they're returning and they're not robbers. But yeah, you can see those bees already keying in on that smell. Boy, it's quite an attractant. All right, and, you, and I left the uh, inner cover off of there. You always want to do that with the top feeder. Okay, let's uh, get over here and replace this one. I'm not going to put the tangle foot on here because it's a super strong hive. I'm not feeding it, and there's no ant issues there. Okay, I went in and got a hive stand for this one. And I'm going to pull the whole top off the top box and set it over here. Then I'll do the bottom box. I didn't light a smoker. Hope I don't regret that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice and heavy. This bottom box doesn't look like it has as much in it. They didn't care for that. Ouch. Ah. Brown is not a good color to wear, FYI. Yikes. Okay, we're just gonna get this out of here. All right, I got it over the tabs correct. Ooh, boy. They leave their stingers behind. Ooh, there's two right there. Oh, mercy! <clears throat> and done. So, I'm not going to put the beast blocker on this one. Uh, it doesn't need it. It's, it's not being robbed. I'm not going to move it. They're just going to acclimate to this entrance here. So it is a little bit of a reduction which is fine and I so to the left 
left is closed right is open and if you don't remember it's printed right here on the on this green thing so I'm going to put it to close for winter time it won't take them long to figure that out now so here's here's what this screen board looks like so you can see where it rotted apart so that's the little front piece actually that come off of it you can see how it rotted there looks like it may have got a little termite in there too chewing on the wood actually I believe that's what happened to this it was like termite candy look at that they got in right there ate this and it just fell off well they won't be eating that uh, hive defender <laughs> so these What's cool about these that I liked them is this insert. You just take that out in the summertime, you've got a screen bottom board. And this helps with Varroa, and it also keeps your bees a lot cooler, more ventilation. Good idea, they just don't hold up. Uh, at least some of mine have not. And this is the worst one, so. I don't know that I can blame that on, on Man Lake, the, the termites, so. <laughs> I was bad mouthing them a little bit. Okay, we got both defender bottoms put on. Hive 12, got our tangle foot around the feet. High 15 here, stung me about three times on the leg, about 20 times that they didn't quite get me. <laughs> and uh, I didn't put the beast blocker on it. Don't need to, it's not in any danger of robbing. They just are figuring out their new entrance situation now, which that won't take them very long. But uh, yeah, I really like these beast blockers. Uh, what's cool about them is if you want to move a hive, you, in the evening you can go after dark when they're all in the hive. You can shut these and lock them in and you can move a hive somewhere. Leave them locked down for 48 hours and uh, open it back up and they'll reacclimate to wherever you put them. That's cool. So it's a moving screen as well and they click solid and it's sealed up really good i really like these so thank you sarah cell for sending me this stuff and uh that's it for the video uh be sure and uh, check out sarah cell's website uh in new zealand and they have some local distributors too i'll put links to those down below and uh that is it give me a thumbs up if you would we'll catch you all in the next beekeeping video y'all take care